The middle part though, the sevens, that was Ed Steel Fox's idea. He wanted it to be in sevens because obviously he likes paranoid androids <laughs> and uh, he just likes sevens. And uh, John Joe sat up all night with a little electronic drum kit teaching me how to play in sevens. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was amazing. When the Might Night sort of came along as well and I felt like it was almost a case of, you know, there was a community building up here which was really quite interesting. There was there was de various different sort of groups of people or sort of coming coming in here to have a drink and then coming here to have gigs and you know I thought it was important to get something regular and it, Ian and Rosie asked me if I wanted to do the open mic. So another thing which is coming on the scene as well was was uh, the mobile disco and gradually gigs started to dry up and venues which used to sort of accept bands were now actually having their mobile disco in and uh, which is such a shame because we were all basically casualties of the disco boom as it was in the in the, um, in right. the, in the mid seventies, and of course then you had the guy from the, the council estate who got his couple of decks and his, his section of singles, and he went out and he got a few lights and he bought his little PA, and he was getting bookings and you couldn't get bookings. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I mean that was that would have been eighty one, so it probably wasn't in the UK then, but certainly um, California, if that's what you did, you just you know, MTV because it wasn't like I don't know what MTV's like now. But it was just music. It, mm. it, there was none of this, uh, you know, series about rock stars or anything like that. It was just purely music. So we uh, we just like to have, like I said, it's it's the fun thing. We like to have fun. Uh, we love it. It's just, it's it's. it's I'm not going to say it's easy to to be in, in Jasper. But when you're on that stage, it never feels like hard work. It always just feels like really good fun. And um, we all do get along very well. Very, very well. In fact, you know, we, we went on. can be, I think, self selecting. There might be a huge number of talented artists out there, but actually, 90% of them simply won't work hard enough. So that takes night, that, that means 90% of them that are out there remove themselves from the competition right from day one because they're not going to work hard enough. You know, the studio shouldn't be 300 quid a day. Oh, the 300 quid a day because you're on a farm. You know, oh, look at this nice hill or whatever. Or look at that nice tree. You know, let's just get in the box and let's get working, you know. You know, it's nice to have the space to go and walk outside, of course, but not for an extra 200 quid a day. It's interesting to me because I'm, I'm stood in the audience and watching in awe a lot of the time of what I'm seeing on stage. You know, or, or not even on stage, but across the pub. You know, because I'm thinking, I can't do that. That's amazing. And these, these people are up there doing that. And there, there's maybe only a couple of people here yeah, they're still putting on a really good show. Started the band uh, with uh, some people at high school, and it was one of those bands which were typical of that uh, era, where we all wore Metallica t-shirts. Um, we all kind of played Metallica songs, and we we try writing a song. It would sound like a bad version of a Metallica song, <laughs> and we all dressed like Metallica. <laughs> And I think basically everyone in the band was Metallica in their own minds, uh, whether they admit that or not, even me. I, I, I probably thought I was James Hetfield, but a kind of skinnier, spottier, less talented version. It's never been about making money for me. It's always been about um, having a credibility as a musician and just singing because for me, it's just the most joyful thing ever on music and experiencing music in general, going to different gigs and that. Sometimes you're not going to have great nights, sometimes you have absolutely amazing nights, but they, they do um, balance each other out. It's a bit boring, you know. Yeah, we don't want one of these moody things. Right, here you go. Here's this is the one time you can talk. You know what? <laughs> even then, I'd sell it. Even if you said nothing at all, I'd go, this is the most extraordinary on the record interview ever. It's, it's dedicated to John Cage. <laughs>